Are you okay there? I can move this. I can move this back. So, listen, we don't have a great deal of time, but first of all, can I just find out a little bit about yourselves? Because what can I teach you about? No, it's not meant to, it's for, it's for the video. I, I think you can probably hear me, yes? The, uh, what I want to know is, is I have a short time to talk about um, uh, neuroprotection, and I thought I'd spend a little bit of time on cerebral function monitoring and some of the difficulties we've come across. But what I don't know is how many of you use cerebral function monitoring. Who has it in their hospital? Who would like? <laughs> who would like it in their hospital? <laughs> and and who does does everybody have an understanding of of how it works? Because. I'm happy to take any questions. I'm happy to take any questions about what I've talked about at Therapeutic Hub because I think my lecture covered what we do: is we cool as soon as we can, we put the AEG on as soon as we can, and we monitor. We look at the criteria for the baby and we monitor. What I didn't say to you in detail was that we sometimes stop cooling after six hours because the CFAM or the AEEG is very, very helpful diagnostically. And if you have a case you're not really sure whether you should have cooled or shouldn't, if you have an AEG on and it's normal for six hours, you can stop cooling. It's very, very helpful. No, 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 no. If the patient has recovered and you think the patient is normal, and you have a normal tracing for six hours and it just had a short shot shop that you initially cooled with but the baby now appears very quickly very normal but you cooled because the baby looked like a big problem or there was a one very bad gas and you weren't so sure and you cooled and everything stays normal for six hours on the monitor and the baby is recovered and you're happy you can stop and because the CFAM can be can be very helpful. It can predict outcome. And a normal CFAM in the first six hours of life with a normal neurological examination indicates that the baby will be fine. And it's a very, very sensitive thing to be done. That's why many of us are using CFAM. So, um, <clears throat> but it isn't, as I said before, it's a very good positive predictive value for severely abnormal um, EEG. So if the AEEG is at all abnormal, then we have a problem. If after six hours you get normality, it doesn't mean the baby is now normal. So if you started with an abnormal trace and then it becomes normal, that doesn't mean the baby is now normal. What it means is that the brain has had some recovery in that there is less depression, but the damage occurred, but now the, now the CFAM is normal. If the CFAM is always normal, then that's a very good sign. But if the CCAM, CFAM was abnormal, then becomes normal, it's not a bad sign, but it doesn't mean you're back to normal. Do you see what I mean? Something has occurred, and if it goes to normal at 12 hours, 24 hours, 48 hours, Still something occurred, but it took that time to become normal. So a completely normal CFAM is fine. But a CFAM that was abnormal means you carry on doing exactly what you're doing. You don't stop because there has been a degree of, of abnormality. I'll, I'll explain. Um, so there are very good correlation between CFAM and EEG, but it's not perfect. Um, and, and basically, if you look at the EEG with a neurological exam, it's a very good predictor of the outcome of the baby. And, and at three and six hours, there was a study in 1999 looking at HIE and, and, and the CFAM at three and six hours. If, you haven't, if, you, if, you have, if you're suspecting HIE, but the baby seems to have recovered and the CFAM is normal at three hours and normal at six hours, the baby's going to be normal. Which is very nice for you to say the, to the parents and very nice for your care. So. Um, say again. Mm. 
yes, because you resuscitated a baby and you were worried about it, and you look at criteria A and you look at criteria B, but criteria B, some babies are just jittery or a bit angry, and you don't really know whether that's encephalopathy or not. So they had a pH of 6.9, they're a bit jittery, you cool. But you come back to the NICU, the nurse puts, gets them ready, you have a look at them, you, they're no longer jittery. They're looking at you very happy and the EEG is completely normal. So you are being very cautious, correctly, but you don't need to carry on cooling if the CFAM stays normal for six hours. Because was the baby going to become encephalopathic? It's difficult to say, but it was angry, it was irritable, and of course, because it had a bit of a hypoxia and, uh, and therefore was upset. But it doesn't mean the baby is going to remain abnormal. Okay. So, can we just mind your bag a minute? Thanks. Okay. Um, so, what, what we do see though, as I mentioned earlier, is, is you, have to, you have to train people. We need to training before you interpret. Um, and intra-observer can be difficult. And that's why we're going to look at some traces and see what people think. Um, the sensitivity varia varies, and sometimes if you, if you think a CFAM just looks at the left to the right hemisphere, seizures can be occipital, temporal, or frontal. So sometimes a single CFAM trace may miss seizures. And where are your seizures more commonly? If you have HIE, are they occipital or are they frontal? This is a question to you. So where would you see most abnormalities? Occipitally, yes. So if you have your leads too far forward, you may miss occipital seizures. So depending on where you place your CFAM, that's why now most of us use dual uh, two, two we use here and here. We use, and I'll show you. Uh, we talked about the diagnosis and timing. Uh, we're just talking about seizures from birth. But you can also look at seizures as to how old a baby is, as to what the diagnosis might be. But we're really talking about um, HIE here. So the AEG is three electrodes, two active normally, one here, one here, and one is noise suppression. And the noise suppression one can actually go anywhere, but we normally put it in the middle of the forehead. It's needles, it's global activity, not focal. It has a very wide trace high activity and a low trace for suppression. The two channel ones are what we tend to look at now, which can help you differentiate between your hemispheric. In other words, you measure between here and here, so you're picking up the differences between hemisphere and then sometimes in the two channel one you can see a seizure in the left hemisphere but not on the right so you this is why we realize that the simple CFAM is quite limited but still very helpful because most of our babies have global seizures it's only when they become focal does it become a little bit more tricky so as I said before one hour is six centimeters you know your video EEG with pages and pages and pages of paper or, 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 or um, electrical traces? You know, one hour is this. So we're, we're very, very compressed. It can look at background activity. Seizures normally have to be a minute. That's why subtle ones, are, you can't see them. You can look at anticonvulsant effectiveness and you can predict outcomes. And that's what's very, very nice. So... Um, <coughs> One of the things we have is when a nurse does something to a baby or the baby does something, the nurse presses a button called a marker. And it tells you if either if she says the baby's having a seizure or she's doing a nappy change or something like that because it tells you the activity of the brain when the nurse is doing something to the baby. So if a baby's just sleeping, you leave it alone. But as soon as she comes to do a care, she presses care and you can see a change in brain activity. And that's very, very helpful. We look at the calibration and impedance because if your needles slip, you get multiple artifacts. So you have to make sure they're in the right place. We look at background voltage, width of trace, burst suppression I'll talk about, and the presence of seizures. Okay. So, 
The Toby. Now, the, the, it was really the UK and New Zealand and Australia that used the CFAM. Okay? It wasn't big in the USA. So their initial, the NICHD studies didn't involve the use of AEEG. But it's been shown to be very, very helpful, and now it's been really taken on internationally as, as, as something that we should be using to monitor the brain in neonates. Because <coughs> the, criteria, the criteria that you use identify the right babies that, to use it on. Um, uh, and as I've said before, if an infant has co commenced cooling and is shortly found to have a normal EEG, it may be appropriate to consider discontinuation. And that's the beauty of AEG, is that you can stop. Um, but it also can help you decide if it's suitable to cool a baby. So, so it has a number of functions. Now we talked about, I'm going to go into this a bit of detail, we talked about voltage classification. And, and, and this is normal, this is mildly abnormal, that's very abnormal, and I'll be talking about those in a bit more detail. And they have positive predictive values, but the most interesting thing is the negative predictive value. The negative predictive value of a normal trace, in other words, meaning that there's no, no concerns, is very helpful. So if you have a normal trace in 12 hours of birth, you're very, very likely, almost 100% likely to be normal, which is great. So, so that's why it's a very useful thing to be able to do, to tell parents. So, looked at some traces. We talked about this a bit in the lecture. So there are those of you familiar will probably know that we look at 10 microvolts and 5 microvolts. So it goes 5, 10, 20, 50. And if, if you can't see, do you want to come round a bit? Um, but you want the upper line above your 10, and the lower line above your five. And that essentially gives you a nice normal trace. Now, I, lo I look at that, to me, instantly, pattern recognition, it's normal. I look at that, and I see my lower margin has dropped. And my lower margin has dropped below five, I can see that's abnormal. It's a moderately abnormal trace. It's widened. I won't go into the details and pathophysiology of why that's happened, but that is, that's an abnormal, overactive, uh, um, <clears throat> Uh, stimulation going on in the brain uh, before you then get suppression and suppression means the upper margin has dropped below 10 so this is a, more of a severe trace because you've now got minimal brain activity so you have normal agitation minimal and it's pattern recognition however <coughs> this is in the arc uh, uh, this was uh, one of the original papers in the BMJ looking about looking at traces and of course they come different machines will look a little bit differently this to me looks entirely normal above 10 above 5 this to me looks abnormal above 10 below 5 and we're not looking at oh well, this little bit was above 5 isn't the baby normal here you're looking at the thickest black area you're looking at the most confluent so most confluent, all this is below 10 to here. And it suddenly goes above 10. So this goes from s severely abnormal to moderately abnormal. This is severely abnormal. This is severely abnormal with bursts. And you've probably heard of burst suppression. You, you can see that beautifully on AEEG. So pattern classification, and you, whichever book you look at, um, whichever book you look at, you will see various pattern classifications. Ordinarily, I show this simply again to you so that you can look at a pattern. A pattern, I see that, I see normality. I see this, I see moderately abnormal. I see this, I see severely abnormal with a lot of bursts. I see this as <coughs> uh, I, I see this as um, below 10 and below 5, severely abnormal, but uh, interestingly a wider trace than this. I see that as a much more suppressed trace. They're all abnormal, apart from this one. <coughs> so, so understanding them is, is very helpful. Now, this I've got some pictures that I've taken from the Olympic Medical, and you can they, they, the Olympic Medical have this online. And it's very, very helpful to learn. <coughs> and 
what, what is good to know is that <coughs> um, this is a single trace. And what I think I want to show you from this is when I show people this one for the first time around, they say, yeah, but that, that trace is all over the place. That, yeah, it, it's a baby having a sleep wave cycle. There's my five, there's my ten. It's above it, but it's going like this. And actually, a very healthy baby has a very lovely wavy form. So I know sinusoidal waves often mean sickness, particularly on CTGs. But a sinusoidal wave on a CFAM or an AEG means healthy. And in fact, if you have a baby who has seizures and has a very poor trace and over the few days recovers, and you get a normal trace back, and then that normal trace goes back to a sinusoidal pattern and a baby regains a sleep wave pattern, it's a really good prognosis. Because this is normality. This is how the babies behave. Underneath, you have a raw EEG. And the raw EEG can be quite helpful. And I'll show you how. So, <clears throat> one of the things you can get is if we look at A here, it says care. So I look at A, and my trace has gone really funny here. And you might think, oh, what's happened there? Is that a seizure? Why, why has that become very abnormal? And because the nurse has said it's a care. So it's not abnormal. It's just that the baby was being agitated. The, the probes may have been knocked. The head hat may have been moved. You, when a baby's having care, you have to be very careful that you don't overinterpret a, a trace. And in fact, this arrow here means that they were worried and looking at this area here. And what this does is it brings this EEG to that very point in time. An actual fact, <coughs> this is chaotic and looks a bit of a mess and probably means that the electrode has come a little bit loose which usually means what these red dots are. It means the contact wasn't great. So we're ignoring that. Here I've got an exaggerated sleep wave cycle. Ignore, ignore. It's a normal trace. But if you don't know how to interpret, if the nurse hadn't said, I did a care here, if the machine doesn't say, something is going off the scale, and that's very unusual, you can overinterpret and say this is very abnormal. So it's all about understanding. So if I said to you, what's the, any problem with that trace? We've dropped below five, haven't we? So if we've dropped the lower level below five, and it looks mostly below five, that's abnormal, yes? Ah, yep, yeah, sure, you can... <coughs> so don't forget, this is ours. This is ours. So the baby's condition will change. So here, actually, maybe, maybe that darkest area was a little bit below 10. Maybe here, this baby was possibly severely abnormal. But here, it looks as if it's mostly over 10, the, the thickest bit of the blue. Here's 10. So under 5 over 10 is moderately abnormal. Then something happens here. Perhaps the baby has gone, it's looking a bit more normal. And then it seems to go, uh, go strange again. Maybe we don't know what was happening here. And therefore we have to interpret the trace with caution. But if you look at the majority of that trace during that period of time, it's moderately abnormal. And this marker here is looking at the EEG, and it doesn't look very exciting at all. Nothing obvious happening there, just a little bit of electrical activity. So each end, middle, beginning, end of, of a trace, will, be, uh, will represent some hours. 7 o'clock, 8 o'clock, 9 o'clock. So over three hours worth of tracing. So you're getting an idea of what a baby's beginning to look like. Why did, why was the baby initially severe and gone moderate? What has happened here? Do we understand it? No, we don't always understand everything, 
but now it looks as if it's going moderately abnormal again. But so what is the trace? You just have to keep watching. What you do know is it's not normal. So the baby stays on the monitor. There's no evidence of any seizure and we'll come to that. So the other thing we can do is have a moderately abnormal trace. Do we agree? Above 10, we like that. Below 5, we don't like that. So wide is moderately abnormal. Okay. For some reason, there's a break. Now, that can be either a gap because the electrodes have come out, the baby's had a care and someone hasn't noticed, somebody accidentally turned the machine off. You get gaps, okay? And then, this lower level seems to come up so that the most of the darker area is above five. So this is a moderately abnormal trace that looks as if it's becoming more normal. And we take a sounding here, nothing particularly exciting there, a little bit of electrical activity. So we can look at this baby over those few hours and see that there is some improvement. That's encouraging. Um, and that's always nice to see. And that is often what we see during therapeutic hypothermia. We see a changing of the trace. Now, this looks very different, doesn't it? Whenever you see this trace very low, two little thick lines here, well below 10 and well below 5, you have a severely abnormal trace, severely abnormal. This is classical burst suppression. Burst suppression. That's what we mean by burst suppression. It means that the brain is so badly damaged that it's really suppressed. But every so often <laughs> fires off some chaotic electrical impulses. So this is classical burst suppression. It's just awful. You take a sounding here and you have a look and you see a bit of a trace. Maybe that's a burst suppression. Burst suppression. So you can see it on the EEG as well. What does that tell me? It's not good news. It's not a good brain. Can I tell you that baby's going to have cerebral palsy? No. Am I worried about that the baby has had some sort of brain injury? Yes. What does it mean in the long term? No idea. But we are clearly doing the right thing by cooling this baby because it's abnormal. Providing we went through our, re our reasons to cool. So you can see a nurse has marked it here for handled. It can be that handling makes the baby even more agitated and gives you more bursts. It just tells you the baby didn't like the handling. Um, so, so there are various areas you can, you can look at and, and can, be, can be very helpful to tell you, uh, to tell you about what's happening. So, um, <clears throat> these burst suppressions may or may not be associated with abnormal movements. When you have a burst, a baby might do something, it might not. Some babies just lying there, absolutely still, and they have burst suppression. Other babies are still, and their eyes may be going all over the place, or they may make some movement. You can't tell um, exactly what a baby's going to do, except say, that's not good. Okay? Now, seizures are, are diagnosed sometimes with difficulty, but once again, routinely, there's a way of detecting them. Let me tell you, no matter how much I teach this, no matter how much I show my doctors, I can come in in the morning, look at a trace, and go, oh my God, the baby's been seizing all night. Why didn't you tell me? No idea. It's pattern recognition. And unless you look at things over and over again, you miss them. This classical upward, where you see a gap in the blue, severe depression, but not a burst, but a white gap, a long, a, la a large white gap goes up, a large white gap goes up, a large white gap goes up, 
put a probe on it. Beautiful rhythmical seizure. You can't have a line like that and call yourself normal because that's not what the brain does. The brain is an erratic. When this is rhythmical, you have seizure. They don't all have to look like that, but that is quite clearly a seizure. And this is quite clearly seizure pattern. Um, I haven't seen that too much. Um, I think if you use the needle electrodes, it's very, very unusual to see. I think if you're using a sticky and everything's vibrating, it's a bit more difficult. So we tend not to see that. Um, at A, there was a procedure. Um, and at B, there was a procedure. Um, but what's happened here is it's changed. We've got a much longer air period of suppression. Probably a seizure there, probably there, there, and a long seizure there. So we still have an abnormal baby. This is frequent seizures. This is much less frequent seizures. Maybe the procedure here was phenobarbitone. Maybe. Because any drug that you give changes your brain pattern. And one of the things that we know is that long-term phenobarbitone is very bad for your neurodevelopment, as we know. And you can see what neurophenobarbitone does to your brain as soon as you give it by monitoring the brain. It really has an effect on the brain. It doesn't always stop seizures, but it certainly depresses the brain. So um, that could simply be an effect of phenobarbitone. The classical effect, actually, of phenobarbitone is actually to make this go wider into more moderately abnormal. So sometimes phenobarbitone turns a trace from severely abnormal into moderately abnormal. Sometimes it just stops the seizures. Sometimes it doesn't do anything. But without this on, you can't tell what it does. And that's why it's very useful. The baby may or may not be visibly seizing. Because you only see it in a certain percentage of babies. You don't have to have any abnormal movements to have a seizure. And that is so true in neonatology and why most of us get it wrong all the time when you look at the observer your baby. When you say the baby's fitting and I say it isn't, we often don't know. Your guess is as good as mine. It's hard. So this is quite often what I, this is the trace that I come into from in the morning and see. And they say, oh, the trace was a bit abnormal, Dr. Reese, and it got better a few times, but then went back to abnormality got better a few times. This is a very long seizure. This is a very long seizure. Put the probe through it. Boom, 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 boom. That's the regularity of that seizure. You can see it on the EEG. So compared to what you just looked at, seizures on the left, seizures now on that, they are totally different. Uh, they both come from very suppressed traces. You have burst suppression, suppression. Seizure, seizure. I suspect this baby is obviously seizing. But sometimes when the baby isn't obviously seizing and the nurse hasn't, nurse hasn't alerted the doctor, nobody looks at the trace till the morning ward round. And you can, I can certainly come across babies seizing all night. So it's learning that pattern recognition. It seems simple. Actually, it isn't always simple. This is actually a baby who very, very difficult to detect. This isn't exaggerated sleep wave cycle. This baby is actually having some seizures and going back to a normal pattern. Now, can you see how hard that is to diagnose? That's not easy. So this is when we say, actually, maybe a bit more obvious here. Why is it coming down so low in a normal trace? And then getting these white gaps. When you look at it again, white gap, white gap, white gap. Something's happening. It's not normal, but 
it could be normal, but actually this was a baby having seizures. So this is where interpretation is, is not always easy. So I've talked to you about pattern recognition. I would look at that twice, and I would be putting my finger here, looking here, looking at the EEG, here, looking at the EEG, and trying to find out if I can see a rhythmical abnormality on the EEG. If the baby's having, his right leg is shaking every time it does this, it's a, it's a much easier, you can say, oh, they're seizures, of course they are. But it isn't always that easy. It isn't always that easy. Sure. Uh, so you're saying these seizures are occurring? He has an elective seizure, so like this, but background trace is okay. He's improving the background. Yes. So I've finished my 72 hours of cooling. Yeah, so the baby, okay, so the baby's now warm. To do rewarming, so we have an elective seizures. Are you always, you only ever cool, I think the data I showed you, you never cool for longer than 72 hours. It's very bad. It's your outcome is worse. So no matter what a baby's doing, I mean, it could seize for the next three weeks. It could just be having a seizure at this period in time. You always rewarm when you went to rewarm. Whether the baby has a seizure or not doesn't make any difference, except if you have a rewarming-induced seizure. So very occasionally you'll get a rewarming-induced seizure, and you just go back down to that previous temperature, and instead of warming half a degree an hour, you warm a quarter of a degree an hour. You never recall. No. The evidence shows that you will cause harm. So that's, we never recall. You just, if you seize and it's on rewarming, you just go back to the next level and then come up again slower. Uh, but you would treat, if, you, if you're clinically worried, you treat. Say, say again. Which apparatus? Between this, this is CFAM. No, this is the C. This is the CFAM. This is all from the CFAM. This is nothing to do with 21 lead EEG. This is CFAM. This is three dots, three leads on the head. That's all. It gives you, it gives you, it gives you a six, it gives you electrical activity, a, sub, a compressed electrical activity at six centimeters an hour, and it gives you a very simple basic raw EEG underneath. Nothing like a conventional EEG. This is why it... it no. No, this is only one channel. This is one channel, not eight or twelve channels. Yeah, the more channels you use, the bigger the area of the brain you can sweep, and the more likely you're to pick up something more focal. But this is looking at just basically a baby who's had a brain, a global brain insult usually has global seizures. It can be focal, but even if the left side of the brain has a seizure, this will just show up as a seizure. It won't tell you whether it's left or right. If you use the four channel, uh, the, four, the two channel with the four electrodes, it'll tell you whether it came from the left or the right. Does that change my treatment? No. But I now know it's on the left. And then the nurse says, oh yes, it was the right arm that was moving. So all this does is tell me there's a seizure. It'll pick up a focal seizure, don't get me wrong. It may not pick up a tiny one back here if your electrodes are here. But if you have a focal seizure here, it'll come up as a seizure. 
it'll, if I have another channel, it'll tell me when it was either left side or right side of the brain. That doesn't change my treatment. Except that if you put one of these on a baby who has herpes encephalopathy and it has temporal lobe damage and it's unilateral, it can actually help you with the diagnosis of that if you have a two-channel EEG. So sometimes looking at focal epilepsy can be very helpful. But in global damage, in HIE, you're looking at a global problem. This is a seizure. I don't know where it, occur, where it came from. Do I use phenobarbitone if I have a parietal seizure or an occipital seizure? Or I just use phenobarbitone. It doesn't matter where it is at the moment. Maybe for the neurologist later on and the child's development will be interested. At the moment, I just want to treat the baby. So it is not, this is not really, really diagnostic. So this is simply, once again, your pattern recognition, it's wide. It's moderate. Moderately abnormal. Ah, I've come up, come up to the end. It's looking more normal. How long? 15? Yeah. Okay. No, that's fine. Yeah. Yeah, you got me for another three hours. Okay. So. Status of epilepsy, this is fantastic. Because it tells you the baby's in status. So, in fact, one month ago, I came in in the morning and went, the baby's in status. But everybody, because the EEG hadn't changed for hours and hours, everybody thought that was the normal EEG. The baby was in status. Uh, hopefully, I've got a status picture to show you. But yes, it's wonderful in status. Because in status, most babies aren't fitting. They're just in status. This will tell you if a baby's in status. And you can bring them out of status by giving anticonvulsants. So it's very, very helpful. I want to show you this again. That's my lovely sleep wave pattern. Very, very nice. We like that. Okay. Uh, lovely, simple raw EEG. Okay. Even a little blip here. D. Nurse did a bit of handling. Okay. It says C. Where's C? Uh, C, I can't see. But the nurse noticed something. She'll mark it down a procedure, a jerking, or whatever. But the trace is completely normal. Okay. Uh, you put the EEG where you want to have a look if it's abnormal, and it's not. So, very nice trace. Remember my white gaps? Remember my white gaps? Here they go. Let's find out where they put, they put the probe on this white gap. Boom, 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 boom. Beautiful seizure activity. So it just tells you there's a seizure. The EEG tells you the seizure, and this tells you there's a seizure. That baby is in either status or very, very frequent seizures. They're just not stopping. Who's watching this for the three hours and three and a half hours? I don't know. But somebody's just watching that trace and probably not doing it. It doesn't look as if the baby has had uh, anything. Or they said they've stopped when they've stopped the seizures or they've stopped the trace. I don't know. But if I come in and I see that and nobody's done anything, I'm, why are you looking at the baby having seizures and doing nothing? Or because the baby isn't moving. You don't have to have clinical seizures. This is dreadful. Say again. Yeah, it's rhythmic, but the baby doesn't have to have rhythmic abnormalities. So... Um, What do we see here? It tells you, this is awful, right? This is horrible, horrible trace. Suppression, burst, suppression. Thick black line down here. This is a dreadful, dreadful baby. Lots and lots and lots and lots of horrible activity. What on earth has happened here? That's a huge white space. Wow, beautiful seizure activity. Beautiful. That's a prolonged seizure. That seizure is going on for 430, 40 minutes. Do we give muscle relaxant while cooling? Um, not ordinarily, no. There's one baby that I find very difficult 
with cooling, and that's a baby who's not ventilated. Because cooling is, excuse my language, cooling is really uncomfortable. You imagine, have you ever tried lying on a cold mat on a mattress for three days? It's horrible. So sometimes I give them a little bit of uh, medication and sedation just to take away that horrible discomfort. If they're ventilated, then I have them on some morphine, midazolam, whatever. If they're awake and they're on CPAP, or they're, they're not, or they're awake and hyperventilating and not on a respiratory support, I don't want to dampen their respiratory support, but I don't want them to feel horrible. I think to have them on nothing is cruel. Because lying on a cold bed for three days is it's pretty nasty. So we, we give them some opiate analgesia in the hope that that'll just take away a bit of the discomfort. But I've never asked them. Sorry? Not on a, not on a non-ventilated baby, no. Because I, don't, I want them to breathe. I don't want to have to ventilate because I've muscle relaxed. Sorry? Analgesia, yes. Yes, paracetamol. Uh, and uh, morphine, definitely, yeah, absolutely. It's not nice. I don't know what the right thing to do is. It, one, it troubles me in my brain. Uh, I want to cool this baby, but the baby isn't ventilated, but I'm worried about his brain and I want to cool him. But now he feels really uncomfortable and horrible and cold. And I don't want him to be agitated because maybe agitation doesn't help if you're trying to relax the brain. So I try and sedate them a little bit, but not enough to ventilate them. So a beautiful prolonged seizure. I think I treat that one. It, this is funny, but what you can see here, do you think that's a sleep wave path cycle? Uh, no, actually look at the red dot. Bing, bing, something's happening that's causing a disconnect and an abnormal pattern. So when this happens, it, it's called artifact. And you can get artifact in many traces. And it can make a trace look funny. And you can have a gap and it can be white and you think there's a seizure. But it's an artifact. So be careful with artifacts. Be wary that the, the machine tries to tell you that something's not quite right. The newer machines have seizure detectors. So a little, when a baby has a seizure, a little light goes on, goes beep, beep, I'm detecting a seizure. It's not fantastic, but it's not bad. It's a machine detecting a seizure. So the new machines tell you, well, I think the baby's having a seizure. This one doesn't. But this one is an old machine. How about that? A post-recovery sleep wave happens to be very, very exaggerated. It's not abnormal. Because this isn't staying below 5, and this isn't staying below 10. It's just very, very wavy. It's, it's a sleep wave cycle, but it's very exaggerated. And this baby is a baby who's recovering from having had an event. It's nice to see that there's some var variation. It means the brain can adapt. It's not that the brain is just recovered and working. It means that it's, it's responding to different types of wavelengths of sleep and wakeness, wakefulness. That means the brain is functioning better than a straight line. I think there are very few conditions where you can look at it and go, ah, I know what the diagnosis is. Non-catotic hypoglycemia is a bit of a favorite because quite often the mother tells you the baby's jumping inside because it's having hiccups. The baby comes out, has hiccups. Hiccups can be, hiccups can be seizures. In non-catotic hypoglycemia, hiccups are seizures. What's very interesting in these babies who are hiccuping and then seeming to be a bit abnormal, apart from taking a bit of CSF glycine, you put them on the CFAM and you think this baby's got hiccups, what on earth is going on here? It's a very characteristic pattern of non-ketotic hypoglycinemia. Not a common diagnosis, but I see about one every three or four years. And so it's, it's just worth knowing that putting a CFAM on a baby who's doing something strange can be quite helpful. Um, it, you still have to LP the baby, of course, to get the CSF glycine, but um, uh, it, is, it is highly abnormal um, and, and a pattern that's, that's typically seen in non-ketotic. So just, there's not many conditions where you see cl classical patterns, but that is, that is often what you see in, in that condition. I don't know whether, is it a common problem in Egypt? Do you see much non-ketotic? 
I mean, it's, it's completely lethal. Uh, the longest I've seen a baby live is seven or eight days. But they, di they die very quickly. Um, but they hiccup. So what do I say when you're looking? Examine the CFAM strip as a whole. Don't get fixed on one little bit. Is it a gentle wave? Yes, then that's lovely. Do the upper and lower margins seem to flow in parallel? Yes. Is the lower margin above five? Yes. Is the upper margin above 10? Yes. Is there regular widening and narrowing of the trace sleep wave cycle? Yes. This is very, very normal. So a lovely way to look at a trace, a normal trace, a very good prognostic cycle. And if an early sleep wave cycle returns, it's also very good prognostically. So that type of trace, when you go through those questions, we're happy. Is the lower margin below five? Yes. Moderately abnormal function. Keep in mind that anticonvulsant sh shift therapy can make this worse. It doesn't mean the baby's worse. Always have a trace before you give an anticonvulsant. Because then, you are, if you put on a trace after an anticonvulsant, it might be a tiny little burst suppression at the bottom, and you think, oh, this baby's dreadful. But actually, it was moderate, and the anticonvulsant has depressed the trace. So moderately abnormal trace. Uh, no sleep wave cycle in moderately abnormal, okay, or any abnormal. Is the upper margin below 10? Does the thickness appear thin? Has the wave appeared to flatten out? Yes, yes, yes. Severely abnormal trace. And there's burst suppression. These are the questions you ask yourself. You can tell what's happening with the trace, okay? So, predictive value. Early return to sleep wave is good. The combination of early EEG and a nucleated red blood cell is a better correlation than with EEG alone. So there's some interesting studies on looking at nucleated red cells. Therapeutic hypothermia alters the prognostic value. Delayed recovery can still be associated with a normal outcome at two years. So even after delaying a recovery, these babies can get better and can be normal, which is why we cool them. So we do our best to try and predict and help the parents with that prognosis. So. In the summary for seizures, is there a rising and narrowing pattern? Yes, rising and narrowing. In the gaps of the, uh, in, in the, gaps of the rising and narrowing, so the lower margin suddenly becomes raised for several minutes, does it show a repetitive, distinctive pattern? Yes, seizures are present. Okay, so you can just put yourself through these questions and ask them, and then it tells you what's happening. So early return of sleep, oh, we've done that one, haven't we? Uh, la, 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 la. Um, that's normal. More, more. And this is just to say, this is the older monitor now. Many of us now have two traces, a left and a right. Last slide. The raw EEG, you will have two, a left and a right. And normally now we have an electrode here, electrode here, electrode here, electrode here, so that we can look at a left and a right hemisphere. It picks up a few more seizures, just a few more, and tells you whether it's left or right. But nothing more than that. It doesn't change your treatment plan. Thanks very much. Not routinely, no. We only treat seizure activity. We're not, well, I'm not magnesium user, no.